Hi everyone, welcome back to Serving Up the Tea, episode two. It's grass court season. Yes, this is my cat's um, wheat grass that she eats. I apologize to her if she's watching. Um, and today we're going to be making a drink that you can enjoy as a family. So it's a non-alcoholic drink and we're going to be making strawberries and cream soda. It's delicious. Not nutritious, but delicious nonetheless. Nope, nope, nope. First thing that we're gonna need to do is turn on the stove. We're going to need two cups of sugar and one cup of water. So put um, the water in. Um, you could do one and a half actually. I think just however sweet you want. I would say like, you know what, let's do one and a half. You're gonna need to let this boil. And then once it boils, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in our vanilla extract. And um, we're going to put in, what else are we gonna put in? Our lemon juice. Um, because we're making homemade cream soda first, and then we're gonna put in the strawberries to make it strawberries and cream soda. Your concoction should look kinda like this before we add the seltzer water to it. Um, and so while we're waiting this to boil, I think we should talk about Wimbledon for a bit. I want to say that Wimbledon has been around the longest, I think. Nope, we need to cut. She has her notes. Um, <laughs> before we talk about Wimbledon, let's admi admire my Wimbledon outfit. Thank you very much. Absolutely would not be allowed to play in this if I was a pro tennis player. I don't think the USTA would let me play in this, which is what I play in. Anyway, yeah, so Wimbledon was founded 142 years ago in 1877. Can you believe that? I don't know who was on the top of the Billboard charts in 1877. Probably no one. Let's talk about a few things. Wimbledon is a grass court tournament, as we know, and that terrifies me because I'm clumsy as it is on a hard court. What am I going to do on grass? I played on grass once. I lost in the second round. My biggest an utmost respect for anyone who even steps onto the grounds. Nonetheless, Roger and Martina, who hold the record for the most titles. Wimbledon is during cancer season, and cancer represents the mother, which I think is such a fitting metaphor because Wimbledon's like the mother of all tournaments, right? Right. I want to right now do my countdown of my five favorite Wimbledon moments. And then one I want to forget forever, but I can't. It's etched into my mind. Coming in at number five, Zena Garrison qualifying for her first final in 1990. I don't know what year it is. Um, I'm from Houston, Texas. Zena Garrison is based in Houston, Texas. She's a big deal. I'm a huge Zena Garrison fan, even though I wasn't alive when she qualified for Wimbledon. Let's find out together. We're finding out together. Um, holy moly, let's find out. When was it? 1990! Oh my god, I'm so good. Except I'm not. Okay, so number five, Zena Garrison, 1990 Wimbledon final. Let's hope I remember this correctly. I am 99.9% .9 sure that she beat the one and only Steffi Graf. Oh, we're boiling. We're boiling. Anyway. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure she beat Steffi Graf in the semifinals, which is terrifying if you think about just two years prior in 1988, Steffi Graf won a golden slam. She had to beat the queen of Wimbledon, in my mind, um, during active players of that time, which was Martina. And you know what? I couldn't beat Martina either. I don't think many people could. I'd like to see someone try back then. Martina currently has nine Wimbledon titles. This is a tangent right now. Martina has nine Wimbledon titles, which is a lot. Um, and she also holds the record, I believe, don't quote me, on the most in a consecutive way, like year after year after year after year, like Rafa at the French Open. Oh, we're really boiling right now. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go to number four though. We're going to number four. I'm putting this on a medium heat, and then we're gonna go to number four. Number four is of course that amazing 2008 final between Federer and Nadal. You guys know all about it. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. It was long, it was dramatic, and Nadal won. Um, spoiler alert. Number three is one that I'm not sure if many people know, but really should appreciate, and that's that the only golden set to happen in women's tennis happened at Wimbledon. Yaroslava Shvedova. Um, to me, is um, a very underrated player. Golden setted. I don't know if it's a verb. Let's try that again. Yaroslava Shvedova got a golden set, or won a golden set, off of Sarah Arani in 2016. And so a golden set means Sarah Arani did not win a point 
But you know what? She tried. Okay, number two, we're moving on. Andy Murray winning uh, at uh, the Olympics. He didn't win in 2012. He came real close. He said that. And that was kind of dramatic and sad. But then 2012 Olympics were in London at Wimbledon, and he did it. And that was really exciting. I'm also filming this on World Olympics Day, so I feel like I should include it. Um, happy World Olympics Day to anyone who competed in the Olympics. Okay, number one, image. Yes, um, image again, yep, two images. This is way back when, I'm pretty sure it's 1956, and I'm gonna check in a second. Angela Buxton and Althea Gibson won the doubles titles together, and this is very important because a real dark, like, nasty part of tennis history was all of the racism and discrimination that came with the country club sport, and Althea Gibson, who is an African-American woman, teamed up with Angela Buxton, who's a Jewish woman, both of which faced discrimination back then, and they won the entire title. Angela Buxton uh, has uh, a biography about her. She didn't write it. It's not an autobiography. And I found it really interesting to learn about their lasting friendship. Those are my five things. The thing I want to forget is, uh, of course, 2009, Andy Roddick. It was so dramatic, and he was up, and then that volley happened in the second set. Cue volley. Maybe. I don't know if we can get that. No! He's put it out! Federer is still in this set and in the match. Four set points gone. Roddick needs to regroup now. That was a body blow. It was really hard to see him lose at 16, 14 in the fifth. You know, I'm never going to bring it up again when I do the Andy Roddick episode. I won't bring it up because I want to forget it too, Andy. Anyway, our stuff is boiling. So let's go back to that. Okay, so after it starts boiling like it is, we're going to need a full tablespoon. Throw my notes somewhere. I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to need a full tablespoon of vanilla extract. Boom. Boom, boom. Ba boom. Right in there. I'm not gonna plagiarize other people's sound effects, so I'm gonna make up my own. I should have a Food Network show. Nope, it get canceled. And then, believe it or not, we actually need a little bit of lemon juice, which makes it like the sweetness convert in some sort of crazy way. I used to be a scientist and not anymore, so I can't tell you anything as to why this happens, you should use an eighth of a tablespoon, which is such a tiny amount, a fourth of a tablespoon would work fine. Okay, here we go. That's more than a fourth, but that's okay. Because we're eyeballing, we're having a good time. You should stir this for like five more minutes. Then you're gonna let it cool for a full hour. Hence why I already have some mace. As I showed you before, it looks just like this, delicious. We're gonna get our spoon. I'm gonna need a glass. Great. And so I need my seltzer water, right? Thinking crickets, crickets. For every 12 ounces of seltzer water, you are going to need two tablespoons of the of the the, the goo, if you will, the, the sweet, delicious vanilla goo we made. We're gonna do one, and we're gonna do two. This is 12 ounces, and then we're gonna stir that up very delicately, just like that. Wonderful. Okay, and then we're going to need our strawberry syrup. And we are going to need two of our strawberry syrup because I like my stuff really strawberry. You could also do one if you kind of want to chill a bit on it. I like the color it creates. You know what I mean? Boom, transfer of weight. There we go. Perfect, that's actually 12 ounces. So it should look just like this, and that actually mixed it too. We're gonna need to put our vanilla ice cream in. So that kind of is like the cream part of it. I would just say one scoop is fine. Just like tap it lightly and delicately. It's Wimbledon, so everyone's fancy, right? Put on your Sunday's best. Or you can just go like that, yeah, just put it right on in. Then what we're gonna need is a garnish. I think one or two strawberries should suffice. We're gonna go ahead and put one. And voila, look at it, strawberry and cream soda. It's like really, really good. I mean, for as like chaotic as that was, the result is amazing. And 
we're gonna enjoy it with. I've never had these before, and I've been to London. Strawberry shortcakes. It is Wimbledon. Don't burn yourself. Don't burn yourself. And then we're gonna just pop over to where I was before to show you the final product. Wash it down. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for Wimbledon this year to see what happens and then to also make this for me and my family and my friends. And you should do the same. See you next time. I did not know how good British food was. This is like amazing. I destroyed this. It just has layers to it. And also like it takes off once you hit the strawberry. I did not think the strawberry would do that much. It complements so well. If this is indicative of British food, you know, you're, you're like a sleeper agent in good food, countries with good food.